I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today, and this is In Focus at the European Society of Cardiology. I'm speaking now with Dr. Elliot Antman, who's a spokesperson for the American Heart Association and, of course, is up at the Brigham with the other Timmy investigators. Dr. Antman, welcome. Thank you very much. We're going to be talking today about the results of the Aristotle trial. Um, and Aristotle is, um, is a trial a compare in which apixaban, a factor 10A inhibitor investigational drug, was compared to warfarin for prevention of stroke in patients with AFib. So this is now the latest chapter in the new anticoagulants. Um, first of all, just a general overview. Tell me what you think of the over, overall findings. The overall findings are very exciting. Uh, this is a new agent that has demonstrated not only non-inferiority, but superiority compared to warfarin. Uh, there was also less bleeding, and I was interested to see that there was even a slight uh, reduction in mortality, which was statistically significant. So this is very promising. It's an exciting additional chapter in the story about oral anticoagulant therapy for prevention of stroke in atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. So help our um, readers a little bit here. Now, this has been a, an evolving, but uh, sort of rapidly evolving recently. Um, we have, this is, this is one of two investigational factor 10A inhibitors um, that we have seen now published data on. The other one is rivaroxaban, mm -hmm. um, and that was Rocket um, AF. Those, those findings reported at the American Heart Association scientific sessions and then just published recently in the yes. New England Journal of Medicine. The first of these was the, of the new agents, direct thrombin inhibitor um, dabigatran, Pradaxa, now approved by the FDA, um, just approved last October. So we have those three. Those are the three non-warfarin alternatives. Mm -hmm. um, and um, tell me, uh, when we look at these drugs, these new agents, um, what concerns do you have? I know you have great familiarity with warfarin, and I know you've been investigating some new agents yourself. Yes. So warfarin is, is an agent that we've uh, had in use for over 60 years, and it's a commonly used drug for prevention of stroke or systemic embolic events in atrial fibrillation. And physicians are very accustomed to it. They know how to uh, dose it. They uh, have learned to live with the frequent INR testing that's necessary to adjust the dose. But they would very much like to have alternatives that are certainly easier to give. And if those alternatives are actually better than warfarin, that's especially attractive. So we, we have evidence now that uh, dabigatran, which blocks very low down in the coagulation cascade as a direct thrombin inhibitor, uh, is uh, superior depending upon the dose that you're looking at. The rivaroxaban story, which was the first of the anti-10A agents to be reported out, was a little bit complicated. I think we can comfortably say that it showed non-inferiority by the traditional analyses we use for superiority analyses, didn't quite make it there. And here we have apixaban, uh, another uh, oral factor 10A inhibitor. And you're correct, we are studying uh, a, another one called edoxaban in the Timmy study group. I'm actually the principal investigator of that study, so I'm quite familiar with this whole landscape. I think what we can say is that uh, we have agents now that are very effective, uh, compared to warfarin for reducing a stroke or systemic embolic event in a patient with atrial fibrillation, all types of atrial fibrillation, chronic and paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. But here are the things that strike me as we consider these new agents. Uh, cost. Uh, there's a lot of money being spent for the research and development of these new, new agents, and understandably, they're going to be more expensive than warfarin. Uh, when thinking about the cost-effective uh, analyses types of uh, uh, things that we need to consider. It's not just the cost of warfarin, it's the cost of the INR testing, it's the cost of caring for a patient who's had a stroke, be it an ischemic stroke or uh, a hemorrhagic stroke. You have to factor all those things in. Uh, these new agents, uh, from the reports that I've seen, do appear to be cost effective compared to warfarin using the traditional benchmarks for things like dialysis, which is the standard uh, benchmark that we use for considering whether something is cost effective. So cost is a consideration. But there's a, a large education campaign that we have to consider here. We need to teach doctors about the pharmacology of these new agents. There are different doses, one versus another. And finally, the issue of reversing their anticoagulant effect is a big one. You and I have talked about this uh, several times in the past. Physicians are very familiar with vitamin K or fresh frozen plasma for reversing the effects of warfarin. They're going to need to learn how to reverse these new agents. 
And we're going to hear some reports at the European Society of Cardiology uh, meeting about uh, a novel reversing agent, and we may see other reports in the literature about using some more traditional uh, forms of reversing anticoagulation, such as uh, infusions of uh, prothrombin complex, for example. So I would say cost, education about the pharmacology, and learning how to reverse these new agents, you know, that's our, our mission over the next several years. Now, I understand that currently, um, and I've heard this uh, from some other physicians that I've spoken with here, that currently, uh, for example, with Pradaxa, the reversal, you have hemodialysis, is the way one would reverse the, the effect of this drug. That's correct, is That's not? right. And that's not something that one would consider lightly. No, it isn't something you'd consider lightly, and it's going to be very complicated because some of these new agents are more heavily protein-bound, and they will not be, uh, they will not have their effect easily reversed by dialysis if the agent is particularly heavily protein-bound. So I'm actually quite interested in the studies that are looking at reversing agents because we have a perfectly well-controlled patient who's uh, optimally anticoagulated with one of these new agents who may unfortunately need emergency surgery and one has to reverse the effect of these agents. So I'm looking forward to the reports that are starting to come out now about the uh, reversibility. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk, just to go back briefly, finally. Um, I've heard this um, as this was published online in the New England Journal and reported here, mm -hmm. the Aristotle results. I've heard several people use the baseball terminology that it's a home run. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you, is it a home run? For, for a uh, I think it is a home run. In fact, it's an out-of-the-park home run because uh, they had uh, very striking evidence of, uh, of efficacy here. There's less bleeding. They have a reduction in mortality. They reduced both ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke, all the kinds of things that you want. So that's my checklist, and yes, I'd say it's a home run. And when a treatment is reported and published and it's considered a home run by people who are, who are leaders in the field, does that aid in, in, in uptake of this agent in terms of by, by other practitioners out there? I mean, does that, if this were to be approved by the FDA, if you had a crystal ball, would you say that it, there might be a lot of people who would be willing to use it right out of the gate? I, I think so. Uh, I think they, the, the interest that will certainly surround Apixaban's a uh, results and the discussion of the Aristotle study will heighten uh, a lot of the interest on the part of clinicians to prescribe the drug. But as we began to discuss a few moments ago, it's more than just the science and the healthcare system in which we practice. It's going to involve cost, and we don't quite know what we're going to be with the cost of uh, Pixaban for uh, prevention of stroke and atrial fibrillation. Well, I want to thank you. So this is a home run, but this is a drug that we'll probably be hearing a lot more about. We don't know um, when it will come to market or even if it will come to market. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it's generated a great deal of excitement here, and I really want to thank you for taking some time to talk with us. MedPage Today in Focus. At the ESC, I'm Peggy Peck. Mm -hmm.